Hello everyone. Today we will be talking on classes of immunoglobulins. Different classes of immunoglobulins differ from each other or they are distinguished on the basis of the sequence in which they are arranged. And this sequence is basically the sequence of heavy chain. So on the basis of arrangement of chemicals on heavy chain, they have been classified as immunoglobulins has been classified as gamma, mu, alpha, delta, and epsilon. Sequencing of heavy chains has revealed that the basic structure where they differ is on the amino terminus, which is highly variable. And highly variable amino terminus up to 100 to 110. They are the variable where the uh, idiotype of, uh, of every class is different. What is an idiotype? Idiotype is the chemical receptor, which is going to receive antigen. This shuffling gives rise to a different receptors and different classes have different receptors. And that is why n number of antigens can combine and, and only with five classes of antibodies. Antigen can be n number. Any new antigen can come across. Antigen is the foreign invader or uh, our own cell can uh, turn into an antigen. So how are antibodies are going to recognize it? They will recognize only because they have variable region. They can shuffle and form receptors. At this portion only, they are highly variable and every class have different idiotype. While they are also called isotype because their molecular formula can be same, but their arrangement are different. And on the basis of the arrangement, they have been classified into five classes. While IgA is further have subtype IgA1 and IgA2 and IgG2 have a, a subtype that is Ig1, 2, 3 and 4. So they have IgG. Ig capital I small g stands for immunoglobulin and G for gamma, mu, epsilon, whatever type of immunoglobulin we are studying that will be in the capital letter. So G is the one which have been uh, found to have four subclasses. Structure of light chain in the same or in all the classes of immunoglobulins, do structure of light chain differ? No, light chain every immunoglobulin except um, one which is formed in dimer form and another which is formed in pentamer form. We will discuss who all are found in dimer form and which all are formed in uh, pentamer form. But those who are formed in uh, pentamer or dimer form have more than two light chains while others have only two light chains. So two light chains present in each and every immunoglobulin will be either to kappa arrangement or to lambda arrangement. Light chains will not have kappa and lambda together. This is important because it gives rise to different ratio of kappa and lambda give rise to different, different immunodeficiency disease, which we will be talking on later. There are some similarities in the, all the classes of immunoglobulin. Just see in, uh, remember it in one slide I'm showing that is antigen combining capacity is at the amino terminus in all type of immunoglobulin. That is the FAB portion. This FAB portion I have very clearly uh, explained in my immunoglobulin structure uh, lecture, which I will be putting in the description box. The link of which lecture I will be putting in the description box. So this amino terminal is highly variable and because of it, antibody have infinite range of specificity. It can combine with infinite uh, epitopes of antigens. Constant portion of every class of IgG is referred as FC, and this is all present. Constant portion is present in all the classes of uh, immunoglobulins. Coming to the first class of immunoglobulin, that is a major uh, amount is found in the serum of this class. That is about 85% of total total quantity of immunoglobulins which are present in the blood. Maximum is IgG. That is 85%. And it can survive for longer period. It's, it has longest half-life. And that is why it may be more in, uh, uh, more in concentration in the serum. That is, it can su survive for 7 to 23 days. That is the longest survival rate of any immunoglobulin in the serum. And it's found in, uh, formed in, uh, found in the form of uh, monomer. Here, I, uh, it's a monomer. 
monomeric structure chiefly found in blood and limb unique ability to cross placenta in pregnant women just remember very important character this is the only only immunoglobulin that can cross placenta others cannot trans be transferred from mother to fetus this one is the one which is transferred from mother to fetus distributed equally between intra and extra vascular compartment that is it can be in tissues it can be in vessels blood vessels what is the role of igg igg enhances phagocytosis in lymphocytes that is macrophages and uh, neutrophils and it helps in neutralizing toxins the, the the when invaders enter they sometimes come with toxins or they start secreting toxins in the system these toxins can be neutralized that is why some uh, uh, staphylococcus food to uh, toxins are self limiting because of these neutralizing toxins even inactivating of viruses very important igg inactivates virus invasion it even kill bacteria it is the second second to rash second antibody to rash where invader is present so which one is the first antibody to rash first antibody to rash whenever there is invasion is igm first lymphocyte to rash whenever there is invasion is neutrophils and first antibody to rash is igm remember this fc portion of igg very important constant portion of igg can bind to natural killer cells and k cells are natural killer cells and those who want to know more about natural killer cells can go to my different videos which i have put on lymphocytes types of lymphocytes there you will know more about natural killer cells so these natural killer cells are going to destroy all the cells which are unnatural in the body right remember at this point so what will happen this antibody will facilitate can will bind to natural killer cells and start a process called antibody dependent cell mediated toxicity antibody mediated adct which can kill or limit the effects of invading microbes so adct is initiated by remember adct initiated by igg second serum second major serum immunoglobulin is iga about 10 to 13% and it's uh, local uh, synthesized locally by plasma cells its half life is 6 to 8 days iga is monomeric in serum iga is monomeric monomer is this form and another iga is joined with a joining chain and there is as you said there as you as you can see if it's very clear in the diagram this s shaped structure this s shaped structure is joining these two j chain is joining in the center and this is like a thread thread this s shaped thread is there this is called secretory protein so those which are iga immunoglobulin antibodies which are in the serum they exist as monomer monomer is only this much and as a dimer when they are on the mucosal surfaces iga is found as a dimer and this is joined by a glycoprotein j chain what is the role of iga secretory iga that is i showed you a thread like structure that is s shaped structure that protein is the one which is protecting it from the proteases enzyme of the bacteria so in intestinal flora the protease enzyme of bacteria is not able to digest this destroy this iga because of the s protein that it is having this iga is important because it is present in secretions such as milk tears saliva sweat nasal fluids cholesterol and in secretions of respiratory intestinal and genital system so we can conclude that iga is present in all the secretions of our body it protects muc mucous membrane against microorganisms when it is present on the mucosal membrane it protects against microorganisms now uh, the one which is pentameric in nature five arms that has five arms and 10 epitope binding site is igm this igm constant region fc region is joined by a joining chain pentamer 
as I have shown, it is a pentamer. You can count. It has five arms. It constitutes five to eight percent of total serum in the uh, blood or in serum. Um, half life is about five days. Mainly distributed. This one is mainly distributed in blood, intravascularly blood vessels. Earliest synthesized immuno. Very important point. It is the earliest synthesized immunoglobulin by fetus. If there is presence of IgM in fetus, that indicates some congenital defect in the fetus. What is the role of IgM? It's, it has five arms, as I've shown. So it has five constant regions also. Five FC portions are the first responder for complement protein activation. Those who want to know more details about the complement protein activation, it's very interesting. Complement protein activation is very important in killing the, it is a kind of innate response and it also helps adaptive response. So it helps two mechanisms, two innate immunity and adaptive immunity too. In both the cases, complement get activated and uh, helps in protection. It is a it's, it helps an immune system. If you want to know more about it, you can always go to my other videos. I have put a lot of videos on complement. Then once the complement gets activated, the, it helps in killing and removal of bacteria. IgM is more active against bacteria. IgG is act, more active against viruses. Even IgG agglutinates invading material. Agglutinates clump and then, help, then brings about the lysis and phagocytosis. Coming to next, that is IgT. It's the 0.2% of the serum antibodies or it's one in 500. If 500 immunoglobulins are present, it is one in number. Found attached to surface of B cell receptors. B cell receptors are the ones which will, um, it's B lymphocytes, which will provide protection, humoral response. It is just, it has high, half life of about three days. So it's there for three days only. What is the role of IgT? It controls B lymphocyte activation and suppression. That means it is like a switch which can put on the um, um, maturation, start the synthesis of uh, B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes will be cloned and made more or it can suppress, it can switch off the mecha. And it also brings autolysis to B lymphocytes. So all B lymphocytes that have been secreted and not needed now, then this will be, lysis will be brought about by IgD. So IgD is the one which is controlling B lymphocytes. It is found in blood, lymphatic fluid. So thought to react with certain haptans too. Uh, there, there is kind of an allergy. If it reacts with haptan, then penicillin and the allergy can be seen. It can also uh, sometimes um, uh, react with uh, proteins, harmless proteins, and give rise to autoimmune response. Uh, this we will be reading as we will go on reading immunology. So very interesting. Immunology is a very interesting thing. And when we will read in small bits, we will understand it more. More we will get it will be more clear to us. What now coming to next immunoglobulin, which is rarest? It's one in fiftieth, fiftieth thousand, fifty thousand of all circulating IG. So if fifty thousand immunoglobulins are there. IgG will be one, so it is the rarest one. Very low in quantity, 0.002% it is present, but it doesn't mean it's, it's not important. It is all very important. It, it has no role in crossing placental barrier or fixing the complement like IgG, IgM. It's not working in with them. It's not working like them. It has a half-life of two days only. Sometimes they are free circulating also. IgE is free circulating also. But sometimes it's found to bound with mast cells and basophils. When it is found to bound with ma ma it is in, in mast cells and basophils, it is, far, uh, it, is, uh, it is binding with mast cells and basophils. And when it's binding with mast cells and uh, basophils, now the, what happens? The role of IgE is whenever an antigen binds to FAB portion of IgE bound to mast cell, that means 
IgG, IgE is there. It's like this. And this is a mast cell because V shape is usually denoted by, uh, denoted for um, uh, this Y shape, not V, sorry. Y shape is denoted for immunoglobulin. So let's consider this. This is Y. And this is the mast cell to which immunoglobulin is bind. Now, when it is bind to mast cell and it happens to encounter a, a foreign invader, the message will go to mast cells and what mast cells will start doing mast cells will start secreting histamines if this is this uh, this cell bound uh, uh, mast cell bound ige is alone then what will histamines will be secreted and histamines one ro major role of histamine is, is a vasodilator so vessels will be dilated and the lymphocytes will start coming towards it so it, it will be helping in inflammation also um, that is a good sign but when we will read in hypersensitivity that this can, if bridging occurs, if two um, IgE which are which are bounding to um, antigen and both are bridging together, binding to antigen and bridging and attached to muscle, so a lot of vasodilators may be secreted and this can give rise to a type of anaphylactic reaction and hypersensitivity which we will be reading further in. But remember, IgE is responsible for anaphylactic reactions also, which is a kind of hypersensitivity. We will read later. Here, just remember, when IgE is not in large in number, but when it is when it is normal in concentration, it is helping in calling the lymphocytes by the histamine mass because it's cell bound. It, it is attached to mass cells, so it can call um, histamine will be secreted and the different kind of lymphocytes will be called there. And it protects us through uh, from parasites like protozoans, orthopores, halmins. And it is protect, uh, I have already told you, when it calls the lymphocytes towards its side, then it is uh, helping in, in, it will give rise to inflammation and that will help us. This finishes the role of different classes of immunoglobulins and the structure of immunoglobulins. Quick revision is IgG can cross placenta. IgM is the first immunoglobulin. When infection is there, it's the first to rise and then IgG will come. IgG persists for longer periods, but IgM is the first. And if IgM is found in fetus, it denotes congenital defects. In all secretions of body, IgA is present. And IgE is responsible for if there is a paras uh, parasite like protozoans, helminths, and all the posts are there, it's going to come and fight. Thank you so much.